thanks very much for the introduction. So uh, like you said, my paper is Gamifying Behavior That Leads to Learning. And uh, this work was done with my co-supervisors, Mark Hancock from the University of Waterloo and Regan Mandrick from the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, so the problem I'm trying to solve, and it's a well-known problem, is undergraduate students do not read their textbook. Every class, the university professor goes, read chapter five, and then no one goes and reads chapter five. In fact, they don't even buy their textbooks often. Uh, this is really well documented. Um, and it may be because reading the textbook is not motivating or they just perceive it as an unimportant activity. But we know in the literature that reading the textbook leads to stronger students, so they really should be doing this. So this is a really great space to use games as a motivator. We have something that is not being done because it's not motivating that should be done. So uh, my approach is to apply a game. So I'm going to try and encourage this behavior through a small casual game. Um, and even though I'm in the education section, uh, the goal of the game is not actually to teach. That's kind of a secondary objective. What we're really trying to do is motivate a specific behavior that leads to learning and modify a positive behavior. Uh, so I created the game Reading Garden. I'll show you some videos in a minute. Um, and in this game, you grow flowers and trees. It's very simple. Uh, you get experience points when you grow them. Uh, and they take time to grow, so an hour or a day or a few minutes. Um, and in order to level up, you just need to keep growing flowers and trees. So, my video. Uh, this is kind of what the game looks like. Uh, so you can water your flowers and trees, and that gives them a growing boost, if you like. Um, it's quite simple. There's an experience bar at the top and some things you can do on the side, and it's quite a simple game. It's a casual game where there's not really a way to fail in this game. You just do stuff. Uh, so if you harvest a flower next to one that's ready to go, you get explosions of stars all over the place. You get a combo. So this is done to encourage people to plan ahead and adds a layer of complexity to the game. By getting a combo, you get a few extra little stars. And you collect all the stars, and then you have collected your experience points. So that's kind of what the basic gameplay looks like. But I haven't said anything yet about motivating behavior. So like many casual games, there's a special currency called gold. Um, however, unlike commercial games like Farmville or Bakery Story or Cafe World or all those ones on Facebook, you don't pull out your credit card to get gold. Uh, what you do is you complete a reading challenge. So uh, you go to this interface here, and you select a challenge from a list that the professor has provided. It's all related to chapters or sections in the textbook. Um, and when you select one of these, it gives you a couple questions, a very short comprehension quiz on the content that was directly related to that chapter. Uh, and this is, of course, designed such that you probably actually need to go and read the chapter to find these answers. So if you complete all the questions correctly, you get gold. If you don't, you have to wait an hour before you can try the questions again. And that was done to make sure that people actually read the questions and don't just click through trying every possible answer. Because these are very short comprehension quizzes. So there's many ways to spend your gold. Like I said, you can water. That costs gold. You can also fertilize. That costs more gold. That gives you a bigger growing boost. We have all kinds of direction, uh, decorations in the game. So uh, you can fill your garden with a 1,000 ladybugs if you want, or make your sky full of clouds, add some fences. Uh, and this helps separate your garden from your neighbors, which is great because we have some social play. So uh, we have a leaderboard first. And the leaderboard always shows you in the middle so there's people you can beat and people you can compete with, but you can scroll to the very top of the leaderboard if you like, or the very bottom if you want to see. Um, in the class, it's played anonymously, which is with a username. And unless your friend tells you who, what their username is, you can't actually know who your friend is. So it's all about uh, anon being anonymous. And so there's a gold leaderboard and a level leaderboard. So there's two ways to compete with people. Uh, so you can visit other players' gardens, and now you've visited your friend, which is great. You can water their garden and get a few experience to kind of motivate people to visit other people. Um, and so also this motivates you to buy a 1,000 decorations so that your garden looks way more impressive than your neighbors. 
Uh, but really, the real reason we have you visiting your neighbor is what you can do is you can encourage your neighbor to read a specific chapter. And if they actually go out and read chapter three, um, you'll get a few gold for it. So this puts a little bit of social pressure because now when they go to their challenge menu, it says like suggested by five people or recommended by two people so that kind of um, can encourage people to uh, read specific chapters that you found interesting or you just want the gold. Uh, so the next steps, uh, we're actually running a pilot study right now in the fall term that's been going on for about a month. Uh, so students have to play this game as part of their course. Uh, so they're not required to do the readings and they're not required to earn role, uh, gold. They just have to get to a certain level in the game, which you do by growing flowers. So uh, they don't actually have to do any readings when they play this game for part of the course. Um, and if they don't want to play the game, they have the option of doing weekly quizzes where they get the same in-game questions, but in longer quiz format uh, that they have to do once a week. So uh, that's uh, what's required of them. And we're actually going to run a full study in the winter term after we're done piloting this term. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the early results. And I don't have any numbers yet, but I do have what the students have been saying to each other and what the students have been saying to me. Uh, so the first thing we know is that people are actually playing the game, which is really great. They've really gotten into it. Um, I had one student say to me, I beat the game in five hours. Is that normal? And I went, oh, no, obviously I have some balancing to do. But that's what pilot studies are for, right? But this is actually a good thing, too, because they played my game for five hours straight and beat it, which was highly unexpected. Um, another thing that uh, someone has said to me is the leaderboards are perfect for motivating me. I check it all the time, which is also good news. So there is some competition going on, at least for some students. So good news there. Uh, so we also know that people are doing the challenges, uh, which is really great news as well. So um, I had a student say to another student, you actually need to read the textbook which is exactly what we want. We want those challenges to be something that you have to actually go to the textbook for. Um, and this is probably the best thing so far, is the textbook is sold out in the bookstore and I can't find a copy. So not only are students reading the textbook, they are putting their money down at the bookstore to buy the textbook so that they can play this game, which has never happened before. So that's probably our best measure of success so far. Uh, and so that's all I have for early results. So I'll answer any questions if you have them. Thank you.